Hello, how's everyone so far? In this part 2 video, we will take a closer look into some of the principles of GLP. Ready? Let's do a little revision here. Well, as I had mentioned before, the GLP is composed of 10 main principles. The first principle, Test Facility Organization and Personnel, provides an outline regarding the management of the test facilities and the personnel involved. It discusses on their job descriptions and the importance of training. The second principle, the Quality Assurance Program, describes the system that manages and ensures the compliance towards the GLP. It describes the responsibilities of the quality assurance personnel and all the documentations that are under his or her governance. Meanwhile, the third principle, the facilities, focuses on the issues and requirements of the premises or buildings where the whole organization of the test study is being carried out. The fourth principle is pretty straightforward. This section provides guidelines on the managements of the apparatus, materials and reagents involved in the study. The fifth principle, test systems. Well, test system is actually refers to the system that is being studied. Let's say you are conducting a toxicology test on rats. Then, the rats are your test system. The sixth principle, the management of the test and reference items. Test items refers to the active compound or the drug that of your interest under study. Meanwhile the reference item is the control or the placebo of your study. The seventh element, the standard operating procedure, is one of the essential components of the GLP. The SOP describes on the documentations of protocols and its management. The eighth principle, performance of study, provides the outline on the planning and conduct of the study. Next, the ninth principle, reporting of study results gives the guideline on how reports should be prepared and their requirements. And lastly, the tenth principle, the storage and retention of records and materials discusses on the management of record keeping and methods of archiving. So far so good everyone? We will go deeper on some of the GLP principles. One of the important element of GLP is the personnel. We want all personnel to be fully capable of handling the activity that they are being assigned to. Therefore, trainings are essential, whether it is in the form of formal training or even through experience. These trainings must be properly documented in the personnel's training records. This is to allow others to identify the assigned personnel for a specific task and their capabilities. Meanwhile, all job descriptions must be clearly laid out. This is to allow the managements to identify what sort of training that is necessary for a specific position. Besides that, a proper timeline must also be identified in order for a personnel to carry out his tasks according to the given protocol. Next, we are going to talk about the facilities. Well, as has been mentioned before, facilities actually refers to the premises or buildings which house the whole organization of tests. These facilities must be of adequate sizes, constructions and locations to perform the designated business. Some of the facilities outlined in the GLP document are The test system facility Is it of suitable sizes and adequately separated? Does it have enough rooms to ensure sufficient isolations of the systems? Is the facility used for storage as separated from the room that house the test systems? Next is the facilities for handling test and reference items. Is the area for handling the test item, that is our test compound, is well separated from the handling area of the reference item, that is our control item, to avoid any risk of contamination? Is the storage area for the test item is properly isolated from other areas in order to guarantee its purity and concentration? Next, is the archiving facilities. Is the facility used for storing the records, samples or specimens secure enough? Will the facility enables easy retrieval of the documents whenever they are needed? And will the facility protect the documents or samples from deterioration over a period of time? 
The GLP regulation also lay out several guidelines for the requirements of the waste disposal. We have to consider whether the location of the waste facility will jeopardize the integrity of the study, and whether the waste disposal facility will allow proper collection, storage, disposal, decontamination and transportation of the waste. The principle that we are going to discuss next is the apparatus or equipment. We want all the apparatus or equipment that are used either in generating, measuring or assessing of the data are functioning properly and producing outcome that is reliable. It is very unfortunate if the data is invalid due to the equipment that is out of spec due to lack of maintenance. Therefore, all equipment must be periodically inspected, maintained and cleaned. The equipment must also be adequately validated for its intended use and also calibrated. In relation to that, all equipment used in the attainment of data must be under control. An equipment is said to be under control when it is validated or checked for accuracy to ensure its qualification for the intended use. It is calibrated and maintained in a periodic manner as suggested by the manufacturer or based on the usage frequency. Any changes in the applications or settings must be documented and the instrument must be revalidated. It is also important to track and trend the data obtained from the maintenance and calibrations. This trend displayed by the instrument allows the personnel to foresee any oncoming problems that may arise and take early preventative measures. Thus, all the protocols and procedures for the maintenance, validations, calibrations, cleanings and the tests must be clearly laid out in the SOPs. The SOPs must also state the remedial actions, should the equipment face any failure or malfunctioning. The SOP must also indicate the person in charge for taking these remedial actions and must be clearly stated. Besides equipment, all the materials and reagents used in the study must also be handled in a systematic manner. The process of purchasing must be recorded and documented once the items are received. Meanwhile, the labels of the reagents or materials should include the following information. The date of preparation and who prepared it. The date of expiration. The components of the material, if the material is a mixture. What is the concentration of the reagent? What is the storage requirement, does it need to be stored at refrigerated temperature? The lot number which allows tracking back to its original container. And the date when the bottle or container is opened if the chemical is used straight from its original container. Besides that, their protocol should also outline the procedures in handling expired reagents. The management must also provide a policy which stated that no outdated reagents can be used in the study. And finally, all the MSDS must be easily available and accessible to the personnel handling the chemicals. Well, the final principle of the GLP talks about the storage and retention of records or samples that has been used in the study. This section of the GLP guideline discusses on which document is required to be retained and archived. It is important that all reports are archived in a systematic manner that easily traced back when they are needed. The management must also establish a policy of record retention and when can actually the document be destroyed. In whatever means, we want the analytical data obtained in the study can be tracked back to its original sample or specimen. The tracking system used can either be in the conventional method of filing or even computerized or barcoding. Now, one of the essential components of the GLP is the standard operating procedure. SOPs are the step-by-step -step written procedures or protocols of an operation or a process. These protocols are authorized and must be verified and approved by the managements. In short, the SOPs are developed in the effort to ensure data integrity and quality. The existence of SOPs allows reproducibility and standardizations of analysis or processes even if they are carried out by different personnel. 
However, if the procedures are to be changed after a period of time, new SOP must be developed, reviewed and approved. The old SOPs must be archived and this allows the audit team to view the changes that had been carried out throughout the operation. The GLP document had outlined several areas that must provide the SOP these areas include the the process of receipt, identification, labeling, sampling and storage of the test and reference items. The procedures of maintenances, cleanings, calibrations and preparations of the apparatus, materials and reagents. The procedures for record keeping, reporting, storage and retrieval. The protocols on the management of the test system and the procedures involved in the management of the quality assurance programs. Well, that is all for part 2. Thank you for your attention. We will be looking into the aspects of the GLP compliance and its monitoring in the next lecture. See you there.